Investors, for far too many times, I have heard the novice, the get rich by Tuesday fantasizer out there make some ridiculous case against dividend investing. Well, today, I'm going to go ahead and present you with all of the evidence that you need to recognize the sheer power of going all in on dividend stocks for passive income. Not only that, but I'm about to dive deep into my portfolio with all of you, then also disclose my dividend income for the month of July, and then share everything that you need to know about all the dividend stocks that actually paid me out, should you actually want want to follow suit on my investment moves. With that, are you ready? So it's been a month since we last did this whole portfolio update deal. And since then, of course, I've added investment tools to my toolkit, loaded up on certain positions and collected dividends all along the way. Therefore, I want to go ahead and start off with a nice portfolio deep dive with all of you using Gitquin, which is the latest tool that I've actually officially added to my toolkit for all of you to track my portfolio. Now, if you know me well, you know that I live by plenty of quotes from the greats or even catchphrases of my own, like stop trying to get rich by Tuesday or what gets measured gets done. Shout out to my father for instilling that one in me my entire life. Anyway, that is the exact reason why I decided to lock in with Gitquin, which is in fact a portfolio tracker. Now, I dropped a link there in the pinned comment as well as the description for you. If you want it, I highly recommend it to actually measure your own personal successes because what gets measured gets done. But popping open Gitquin here, we can see right off the bat that my portfolio, despite all the market mayhem, is doing just fine sitting at 182000 thousand one hundred and forty one dollars and fifty five cents as of this recording but i actually want to take you over to the allocation tab here for more of a comprehensive breakdown because we could see portfolio wide i'm sitting on about ninety five thousand eight hundred and seven dollars in stocks before tapping into etfs at roughly forty four thousand five hundred dollars and then in mutual funds there around thirty thousand dollars also i'm sitting on a heap of cash at eleven thousand three hundred dollars which was more at the start of the month but i have been in dollar cost averaging into certain positions position wise we can see that I have the vast majority of my money in a Vanguard fund, which was my initial foundation before getting invested heavily into Apple, another ETF, and then more recently into Google at roughly $18,000 worth of my portfolio. And back into another ETF before we see my J&J &J play, Realty Income, and investments like a Visa Stake, Lockheed Martin, and Tesla, and then scattered into other positions. All in all, though, we're going to go ahead and dive into a sector breakdown to see that I'm heavily invested in tech at roughly 48% worth of my portfolio because at my age, nearly 30, I can afford to take some risks and just surf the waves of market volatility, knowing that I'm in this game for decades to come. But to play it on the safer side, the next largest sector is healthcare at 13.53%, consumer discretionary at 11% before spreading thinner into other sectors. Now, I quickly want to dive into a very unique feature on Gitquin, the AI analysis of my portfolio, where I score an 85 out of 100. We're going to come to find that diversification-wise, I'm a perfect 10 out of 10, risk-wise at a 9 out of 10, and as for fees coming in at a 9 out of 10 as well, meaning in comparison to other investors, I'm paying next to nothing in terms of fees for all of my funds. But as for this macro score at a 6, I have points off, which if we click to explore further, we can see it's just because the stocks that I'm actually invested into are heavily impacted by current conditions. But for me, that just means a golden opportunity is lurking if we keep too long-term thinking. Now, as for all of my recent purchases, because I have only recently seen synced with Gitquin. All of the data is not necessarily there yet, but I have been scoring more shares worth of Vanguard's S&P 500 index and Vanguard's tech ETF, ticker symbol VGT, as the market has been faltering. And as for individual stocks, well, Google has been the one major focus for me. So I've spent hundreds of dollars, dollar cost averaging into Google throughout July, as well as those other ETFs. But I must say that I am most shocked about the record month of July in terms of dividend income, as I have only had three dividend stocks shell out their dividends to me along with three ETFs and dividends from my cash reserves sitting in that Vanguard settlement fund all totaled up to a brand new record. So let's go ahead and break down each dividend payment here, starting with the beverage behemoth that we all know and love, Coca-Cola, ticker symbol KO, which has actually been doing exceptionally well this year, at least year to date, as the masses of investors flock to big name safety plays amidst all the uncertainty and more recently the tech sell-off. As we can see right now, Coca-Cola is up 16% this year 
here trading for $67 per share, but simply staying invested in Coca-Cola like our good friend Warren Buffett is where the magic really happens. As we can see, the stock does continue to appreciate. We see over 135% worth of share price appreciation over the last decade. However, even with the bullishness from the analysts with nominal upside expected to hit $69.55 per share, hedge funds loading up more recently buying more than 2 million shares worth of Coca-Cola, I'm actually simply holding on to my position and we'll just continue to go without focusing on scaling this one unless it really drops to some insane buy-in price. So I hold 26 total shares. I collected $12.89 thanks to the dividend yield coming in at 2.88% while remaining strong on its 104-year dividend track record and a solid 7% average growth rate year over year. Next up, I'm going to go ahead and jump into the 12th of the month and we're going to talk healthcare here with Medtronic, ticker symbol MDT, which has been a position now in my portfolio since 2020. Now, Medtronic is a whale within the healthcare industry, and it specifically focuses on medical technologies, with its sole focus really on medical devices. We're talking about analyzers, blood, pacemakers, and just machines that touch our everyday lives. And a company that we all rely on, which shores up all of my confidence as an investor in Medtronic. However, it really hasn't been faring all too well amidst our economic conditions throughout the last two years as hospitals and medical facilities really scaled back on spending, which impacted Medtronic's bottom line in terms of revenue. So we do see Medtronic still in the red right now today, trading for $79 per share. But have a look at how this stock fluctuates here and there, depending on interest rate cut news or market optimism. Moreover, zoom out with me to see over 64% worth of growth over the last decade, which is not too bad. But listen in here as a younger investor, well, I have a lot of time on my hands. So I'd like to actually go towards a stock that's going to really focus on more growth than safety. Regardless, it's a comeback player and it's totally dependent on interest rate cuts. Smart Money has been loading up, buying more than 2.9 million shares worth of Medtronic. Well, the company itself actually issued its largest share buyback program back in April. And of course, that's when the stock was deep in the red. Now, on top of all of that, analysts are bullish, expecting a share price to hit $96 per share. That's 21% worth of upside from here. As for now, this is just another position once again that I'm not going to be scaling, just holding on to, but I have 20 shares, which allowed me to receive $14.50 all thanks to that dividend yield coming in strong at 3.51%, remaining very safe according to Simply Safe Dividends. And we're talking about an average growth rate now year over year at 12% on a dividend streak for the last 46 years. And should you actually be seeking monthly passive income, which is I know on everybody's radar, there's no better REIT to get invested into than Realty Income, ticker symbol O, which has been my personal REIT of choice as it's the industry powerhouse in terms of net leases. It's a vast size with a portfolio of over 15 15,000 properties with 1,500 clients to lease them out to, allowing them to maintain that occupancy rating of around 98% or above. That all gives me confidence to sit tight with Realty Income. However, what you absolutely need to know is that Realty Income, as all real estate players, was devastated by high interest rates. So throughout the year, as we can see, it's trading down in the low here is of around $52 per share. And I would assume as rate cuts actually hit, Realty Income is just going to give all shareholders a run for their money as it's been doing so for the last decade, delivering through on over 118% worth of appreciation. Now I've scaled my Realty Income position as we saw in Gitquin to almost 4% of my portfolio, which equates to over $6,000, ultimately totaling out to 114 shares, allowing me to receive $30.10 thanks to that dividend yield coming in at 5.5%, which has been reliably paid out now for the last 55 years while growing steadily by 5% year over year. As for my thoughts on whether Realty Income is a buy, will analysts see over 5% worth of upside coming up to $61 per share. Hedge funds have been busy buying, but at the low of $50 or so per share. And as the stock has just been beaten down, even the Realty Income team made the decision to issue share buybacks, as we can see. Now, I think investors who are seeking more monthly passive income can have an opportunity with Realty Income right now, but because I'm actually over 100 shares, I'm focused elsewhere. Now, investors, Coca-Cola, Medtronic, and Realty Income were the three individual stocks that paid me out a dividend in July, but I then had a triple threat worth of ETF ETFs pay me out as well. Before I cover them, I just want to go ahead and key you into something personal to me, which is my goal on YouTube. Of course, my goal simply comes down to helping as many investors as possible and financially speaking. But running with our catchphrase, what gets measured gets done, I want to slash the number of 72% of you who are watching but not yet subscribed down to 50%. Therefore, I want to go ahead and ask you to take one second to help me do just that. If you're not already subscribed, do so now and you'll have my word on delivering through on more content, not only of more value, but just more weekly videos. Videos. Be sure to tap on that thumbs up button as well, which is going to key me into the fact that this is the content that you're enjoying.
enjoying, so I'll make more of it. With that, let's go ahead and get to these ETFs. As I click back into Gitcoin, notice once again just how much I have piled in really into three ETFs from the Vanguard Total Stock Market Index to Vanguard's Tech ETF. And the reason being is because I hate losing. Now with ETFs over the span of time, you really can't lose if you're playing the long game of the stock market. Moreover, I just never really have to worry about picking the winners, which is next to near impossible to do 100% of the time. So now let's go ahead and break down the dividend income from the three funds, starting with the Vanguard Technology Fund, ticker symbol VGT, which paid me $18.29. Next up, the entire S&P with VU, ticker symbol VOO, which paid me $1.78, bearing in mind that is a brand new position to the portfolio that I just started investing into. And finally, the Vanguard Total Stock Market Index Fund there, ticker symbol VTI, which the dividend came in at $82.78. Now, in counting the dividend distributions that came in from simply having my money parked in a Vanguard settlement fund, I collected another $71.05, all of which brings me to a grand total of $231.04 for the month of July. So let's go ahead and click in to quickly see just what a record-breaking month looks like here, not even breaking triple digits as of previous Julys. And moreover, a pop now into the annual total to just over $1,500, meaning we are well on our way to smashing through another annual dividend total. Now, investors, I want to go ahead and ask you what you brought in during the month of July, your top performing in dividend stocks, as well as, in all honesty, your thoughts on this dividend investing strategy. If you're having trouble with it or really seeing the power of dividend investing work in your favor, comment all your thoughts down in the comment below. Definitely be sure you're subscribed to the channel. Make sure you click in right here for more insights now.